Hello everyone, welcome to this class. In this class, I'm going to be teaching you about solar energy, solar installation and everything about solar that you need to know as a beginner. I'm going to start from the very beginning. I'm going to teach you up to the very advanced topics that you need to know about solar installation and solar energy systems. First thing we're going to talk about is where does solar energy come from? We'll talk about renewable energy. You cannot talk about solar energy without talking about renewable energy. Renewable energy is the energy gotten from natural sources like your sun, we have the wind. So the focus for this class is the energy got it from the sun. So energy got it from the sun is known as solar energy. So I'm going to use a block diagram to represent the flow charts, how you amass energy from the sun through solar panels and get power in return. Now, first of all, we talk about the sun. This is the sun. Now from the sun, you can generate energy through solar panels. Now you have the solar panels here. Now this is a solar panel. An example of a solar panel, a PV, photovoltaic cell. Now these cells are able to generate energy from the sun. These solar panels are able to convert the energy from the sun to direct current. Direct current. You understand? So this is direct current. Now this solar panel. There are different types of solar panels. We have mono crystalline, then we have polycrystalline solar panels. We also have mono fissure, then we have bi fissure. We have half court solar panels. Then we have your normal solar panel. You can have a bifacial monocrystalline half quartz panel. You can have a bifacial polycrystalline half quartz panel. I'm going to explain all of these ones in my next round of videos in this series. Now, this solar panel, it converts the energy from the sun to direct current. Now, you know, you don't use direct current. The load we have in our house, they use alternating current, AC. But the energy from the sun after the conversion from the solar panel is DC. Then the next component we're going to talk about is from the solar panels, the energy that is generated from the solar panels enters this charge controller. So this is solar charge controller. Now this is solar charge controller. Now this is so from the solar panel, you have the solar charge controller. Now the charge controller is very important because it regulates the charging of the batteries and discharging of the batteries. Now, from the solar charge controller, we have the battery. There's a battery. For a charge controller, we have different types of charge controllers. We have PWM solar charge controller. We also have MPPT. PWM is pulse width modulation. The why MPPT is maximum power point tracking. So we have PWM and we have MPPT. Yeah, PWM is cheaper and is used for smaller systems. 12 volts, 24 volt systems. The Y MPPT is used for larger systems that require a large number of panels, then probably lithium batteries and other kinds of sophisticated battery setup. That's when you use MPPT charge controllers. Now I'm going to talk about this in my next round of videos in this series. Now, charge controllers to batteries. Now we are still on the DC stage. So this is DC, then the energy that goes into the charge controller is also DC. Then from the charge controller, we have the battery. The battery stores the energy produced in DC. So we have the battery. We have different kinds of batteries. We have lead acid battery and we also have lithium battery. Then for lead acid, we have AGM. We have flooded or tubular batteries. We have dry cell. Then we have lithium battery. These batteries, they are weighted in volts. We have 12 volt batteries. We have 24 volts. We have 48 volts, even 96 volts. But you can connect two batteries of 12 volts, 12 volts to get a 24 volts battery. If you connect them in series, you get a 24 volts, depending on the system you want to install and depending on what you need to power the inverter. From the battery, it moves straight to where? The inverter. This is the inverter. This is the main component of every solar system. This is like the heart of a solar system. 
Now the inverter converts the energy that is stored in the battery from DC to what AC, which is alternating current. Now, then the output of the inverter is what goes into the load. The load can be your bulb, your fan, your fan, your refrigerator, and so on and so forth. And then for inverters, we have different kinds of inverters. We have pure sine wave inverters, and we have modified sine wave inverters or sachet inverters, as we normally call it. Then we also have hybrid inverters and transformer based inverters. Now we have hybrid. What are hybrid inverters? Hybrid inverters, for a hybrid system, you don't need a charge controller because the charge controller is inbuilt, it's inside the inverter. I have to withdraw this block diagram using a hybrid inverter. This is how it's going to look like from the sun to the solar panel, then to the inverter, then the inverter to the battery, then to the load. Because from the solar panel, there's a PV input on the inverter that is a separate part of the inverter that controls the current and the voltage that goes into the battery for charging and discharging. Then before the inverter also converts the energy stored in the battery to AC and for the loads to be powered on. So this is how it works for hybrid systems. But basically, you need to understand how to connect these systems with the charge controller. It's very important for you to understand this regular setup that involves using a controller, either a PWM controller or an MPPT controller. Also know that inverters are weighted in voltage. We have 12 volts, we have 24 volts, we have 48 volts inverters. So for your 12 volt inverter, you are required to use a 12 volt input, which is a battery of 12 volts to power the 12 volt inverter. Then for a 24 volt inverter, you are required to use a battery of 24 volts, either a, lit a single lithium battery of 24 volts or two lead acid batteries of 12 volts connected in series. Because when you connect batteries in series, the voltage will add up to give. So if you connect these two batteries in series, 12 and 12, you have 24 volts connected to the inverter to power on the inverter. You cannot use a 12 volt single battery to power on a 24 volt inverter. It's not going to work. You cannot also use a 24 volt to power a 48 volt inverter. It will not work. The same way you cannot use a 48 a 24 volts for a 12 volt inverter. It will not work. So the voltage of the battery has to be equal to the voltage of the inverter. That's a very important point. The voltage of the battery, battery volts must be equal to inverter voltage. Regardless of the capacity of the inverter, whether it's 1 kVA, whether it's 2 kVA, whether it's 3 kVA, the voltage is what is the most important parameter for the heavy inverter for it to be able to connect it. So if the voltage of the inverter is 24 volts, you need to make sure your battery bank and your battery connection matches the voltage of the inverter before the inverter can work. And then again, it's also important for you to note that for your charge controller, the solar panels are connected in such a way that they match the, the technical parameters of the charge controller. Now, in a solar system, you have more than one solar panel, maybe two, four, depending on the system you are designing. Now, and each of these solar panels, they have their own technical parameters as well. Voltage, they have voltage. We have 12 volt panels, we have 24 volt panels, we have 48 volt panels. So when connecting your solar panels, you are going to make sure that everything you are connecting together matches what your charge controller can accept. Then for the inverter, you are going to make sure the battery voltage is equal to the inverter's voltage. While for the charge controller, the charge controller has a range most times, a range of voltage in which it operates. So you are going to make sure you connect your panels in such a way that the voltage or the current add up in a way that it doesn't exceed the range, the acceptable range. Let me give an example. If you're using a charge controller, a PWM charge controller, and the charge controller has visited 12 volts, and you have 12 volts and 30 amps, 30 amps, and you have four solar panels of 12 volts, and each of them has 5 amps. Now, if you connect them in parallel, you are going to have 12 volts. 
you connect four solar panels in parallel, the voltage does not change when you connect in parallel. We are going to see that later. I just want to give an example. When you connect them in parallel and connect to this charge controller, it will work. Because it's 12 volts, it matches the charge controller's voltage, which is 12 volts. Then 5 plus 5 plus 5 plus 5, which is the current, gives you what? 20 amps. But the amperage here, the maximum amperage here is 30 amps. It will work. But the moment you connect one of this one in series to give you 24 volts, and this one to give you 24 volts, and you connect to this PWN charge controller, it will not work. You are going to damage the controller. So when you are sizing for panels and controller, make sure they match each other. When you have an MPP charge controller, you have the option to connect multiple series and multiple parallel connections because they have a higher range of voltage and current they can accept. You can have up to 145 volts for regular MPPTs, up to 145 volts, solar PV voltage. When you connect in parallel, you know how many are supposed to connect together to get to be within the range of that acceptable voltage for the charge controller. Then for hybrid inverters, most times they require high voltage and less current. So most times you connect everything in series to make sure you get the high voltage. We're going to get there. When we get to that bridge, we're going to cross it. Then after that, we have protective devices such as breakers. There are points in the system where you have to apply these breakers. These breakers are necessary to make sure that your system is well protected. You can place a breaker in between the solar panel and the charge controller, a DC breaker. Then in between the charge controller and the battery, another breaker. Then between the battery to the inverter, another breaker. Then from the inverter to the load, you have another breaker, AC breakers. Then why these ones are DC breakers? Now these breakers, you have a rating, current rating and voltage rating. So when whatever is entering inside exceeds that rating, it shuts out to prevent further damage of your system. That is there. Then we also have such protective devices. We have thunder arrestors, then we have a lot. Then for the AC side, we have AC breaker, we have AC voltage protector, we also have AC surge protector. Yeah, these are all protective devices that you can incorporate into your system to make sure that you have a safer solar system that is devoid of any intending damage. Then we have cables. All these systems are interconnected together with cables, different kinds of cables. We have DC cables. We have AC cables of different sizes, 10 mm, 6 mm, 25 mm for battery, 50 mm and so on and so forth, depending on the size of the system you want to install. When we get to that point in the series, I'm going to explain everything and tell you which of them is best for which system, depending on what you want to install. Now, so that is everything you need to know about this beginner class for now. In my next round of videos, I'm going to break down each and every of these components for better understanding. If I round off this class, just give a summary of everything we've talked about before. We talked about how energy from the sun is converted into DC through solar panels. And then from the solar panels to the charge controller. It's necessary for you to know that you are not supposed to connect the solar panels directly to a battery. It's not a good practice because the energy that comes from the sun is like this. For instance, this is a DC uh, shot DC graph. It's coming like this. If the sun is high, maybe around two in the afternoon, it goes like this. And maybe at some point the sun is down, comes like this again. So it's always fluctuating. It's not constant. So you need to make sure a charge controller is there to regulate the flow of energy from the solar panel to the battery. Because these batteries they, they charge at a constant rate. When you charge them at different rates, connecting directly from the solar panel to the battery. Going to damage the battery so it's not a good practice i know some persons normally do it but it's not a good practice so you connect the solar panels to the charge controller make sure they are properly sized then your charge controller to the battery then from the battery charge controller charges the battery and then battery stores the energy and the inverter converts the dc stored into ac for your consumption also know that there are some inverters that can convert the energy from the sun directly to ac now hybrid inverters let me show you Something like this. We have the sun, we have the solar panels, then we have the inverters, then we have your load, even without a battery, with no battery present. These are mostly hybrid inverters, high frequency inverters. They can work without a battery. So when the sun energy is this intensity of the sun is low, then we have low or zero output on this side. But when it's high and the voltage of the solar panels connected is high enough to produce 
voltage here, then you have voltage and your loads will be powered on. But basically, you need a battery bank to be able to store energy so that when you have less energy from the sun or days of autonomy where the rain falls for one week, probably at nights where there's no energy to charge, the battery storage comes in and the inverter converts DC to AC for your loads. So that is all about that and uh, I think for now, this is all you need to know about the basics of solar panels, solar installation, solar energy. Now, if you have any questions, please put them in the comment section. I'm never ready to answer your questions and to attend to your questions. I know you've learned a lot from this lesson. Please hit the like button and subscribe if you don't want to miss the next episodes of this series. And so I will see you again in the next episode. And I'll also make sure I talk about everything that concerns solar installation. I will do practical teachings. I will talk about separation of loads. We'll talk about how to connect to changeovers, connecting of breakers, such protective devices, electrical installations relating to solar systems. We'll talk about how to write a quotation for your customer and how to source for jobs as a beginner. Thank you very much. I'll see you again in the next video. Bye.